Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our session, which is uh, YouTube Android Player Tools. Um, and we're going to be talking today about how to bring YouTube to your Android apps. Um, I'm Ross McElroy. I'm a YouTube uh, mobile engineer in, within Google at Google London. My name is Anton Hanson. I work together with Ross, and I'll be doing a live coding demo later. So first off, I thought I'd just give a brief rundown of some background on both YouTube, um, its history, and um, its progression to mobile. So we all know YouTube. Um, it's our favorite destination for keyboard playing cats, um, space cats, and skateboarding dogs. And of course, that's the way it started, with um, a lot of viral videos, amateur videos, giving people the ability to express themselves on the web. But it's progressed into more than that. Um, there's now a wide range of content available um, for doing every, watching any kind of videos on YouTube. So you can learn something new. There's a huge variety of lectures available, um, from anything from statistics to quantum physics to cooking. Um, it's been used as a platform for campaigning. For example, in the recent Kony 2012 video, or the um, videos uploaded from Egypt during the Arab, um, Arab Spring. It's also a great platform for surfacing new talent, new music. Um, so if anything from the next greatest uh, band demoing their latest song in their garage to um, official music videos from the su next superstars. And people love watching these videos. There is absolutely massive amounts of video playbacks watched on YouTube. There's over 4 billion uh, videos played back every day on YouTube. Um, that's more than 1,000 hours of videos being watched every second. Incredible amount. And the catalog is growing tremendously as well. Um, over 72 hours of YouTube videos are uploaded every second, oh, sorry, every minute. Um, huge amount of additional content. And of course, as the content has changed, the way in which we watch the content has evolved as well. Originally, of course, it was only PCs were the um, platform which you could watch YouTube videos on, the only thing powerful enough. With the rise of smartphones, tablets, smart TV devices, a lot more people are choosing these types of devices to watch their YouTube videos on. Um, we're now around the world. It's coming up towards 20% of all YouTube video playbacks happening on mobile devices. Um, in the USA, it's greater than 20% already. And uh, in some countries, for example, South Korea, it's already more than the majority. It's greater than 50%. And so I think it's clear that as these devices become more prevalent in the home and people's pocket, this is going to be the medium of choice for people watching YouTube videos. Um, and it's going to be the majority of viewbacks happening on these mobile smart devices. But one of the other great things about YouTube, which helped build its success in the first instance, was its ability to allow you to embed YouTube videos in your own website. Um, so this allows you to have great video content on your website without having to have um, the whole necessary infrastructure for um, showing these videos. However, there's not up until now been a very satisfactory option for um, embedding YouTube videos in your mobile applications. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So today, we are introducing and pre-announcing a new YouTube Android Player API. Um, and we want to put YouTube in your apps. So there was an important thing I said there, which is this is a pre-announcement. Um, so all of these details today are going to be subject to change. Um, we're not going to be launching for at least a couple of months. Um, and we would uh, encourage feedback and suggestions and feedback re future requests. So if you have any comments, please use the mics at the end of the talk or we'll be hanging out at the YouTube Developer Sandbox after this talk. You can come and talk to us in person. So saying that, it's pre-announcement, you probably already have a copy of it in your pocket right now. How many of you have the YouTube IO Companion app? Any of you used uh, live streaming on it? You've used the YouTube Android Player API in that case. Anton, you want to have a look at what's going on in another, um, another, another session? All right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, whoop. Let's do this. See what's on. 
here's a live session. There we go. Looks like they're having fun there. <laughs> Static slide. So I'm hoping that we're gonna talk something be interesting to you today um, and you'll not resort to watching other sessions during the middle of the talk, but if you do, um, I'll at least be happy that you're using our tool. Thanks. So why do we want another YouTube player API? Um, so there's three options available to you at the moment to embed uh, YouTube videos in your apps, and they're not terribly satisfactory. So the first two involve uh, embedding a web view in your app and using that, using the standard web embeds currently available. The first web embed option is the normal Flash-based embed. So this was the traditional web embedding format from the beginning of YouTube. Um, unfortunately, it's not really a very true mobile experience. The buttons are not very easily clickable on mobile phones. It's not, used, uh, it's not optimized for a touch experience. And also, of course, it uses Flash, and not many devices have Flash pre-installed. And if Flash is not available, it will um, end up using the browser plugin, which means you have no access to the player API yourself, and you don't have access to monetized content. So overall, this is not really a very good mobile experience for users. The second option is an iframe-based embed. So this is a newer embed option, which has been made available recently. Um, it offers HTML5 video, so it can be played on devices without Flash. And you can have full access to the player through an API. However, of course, this is embedded in a web view, and therefore, the API is JavaScript. And there's a kind of impedance mismatch there between the Java which you're writing and the JavaScript in the API. Um, it's also, unfortunately, unsupported on some versions of Android. So this is not really a very good mobile development experience for you. And the final option is what most of you end up doing, just um, throwing off an intent to launch the YouTube video in the native Android YouTube player. So this is really easy to do. You just need to create an intent with a video ID, and it gives a really native, good experience to users. Um, however, you can't embed it within your own UI, and it's the fire and forget, of course. You have no player API access, and the user ends up leaving your app to view the video, and will hopefully come back, but there's no kind of guarantee that they're staying within your application. So this has been described as um, a kind of out-of-body experience by some of our partners. So no control in that option. So this is why we're creating the YouTube Android Player API. So it's a native um, library specifically designed for Android devices. And it actually makes use of a lot of the same code that's used by the native Android YouTube player. So you take advantage of all the development that's gone into that player in your apps automatically. It's been optimized for the full range of devices that run Android, um, from mobile phones, tablets, and Google TV devices. And it's been optimized so that it works well on each of them. So for example, on Google TV, we have a different controller scheme, which uses the keyboard-based remote controls um, rather than a touch-based interface, because of course you don't have touch on a TV. We have support for a very wide range of um, Android platform versions, right back to version 2.2, that's the Froyo release through gingerbread, honeycomb, ice cream sandwich, and the recently released jelly bean. Um, so this captures over 90% of the um, Android devices that are out there already. And we also wanted to make it really trivial for people to embed YouTube videos in their apps. So I'll go into more detail into how the API works later in the talk, but I just wanted to give you a brief look at embedding, how, how it would work, and these three lines are really all that's needed to launch a YouTube video in your app. We have a lot of extra support baked into the library to make sure you can have a really good polished app and everything can be taken care of for you. And we have good support for full screen orientation changes, handling, hiding of the system UI at appropriate moments in time and restoring of that. Um, and so it just makes it an easy experience for you to embed it in your apps and make it a polished app. Um, the YouTube videos look gorgeous on the um, devices we support full HD up to the amount of uh, resolution supported by the device. And the quality control is kind of automatically um, dealt with by the, um, the API itself. So you don't need to worry about whether the, qual the quality stream will be playable on that device. The library will take care of that. And it will also choose the quality automatically based on uh, network conditions. So on a mobile network, it will use a lower quality stream so that the user gets video quickly rather than having to wait to buffer. 
And finally, it has full support for monetized YouTube content. So this is an important one for partners. Um, it means that you have a much wider range of content available to you. You have um, available, you can view all the content that's been marked as monetizable on YouTube. And it also means that if you are the content owner, you have a, can have an additional revenue stream. So if you own the content and you put the content in your apps, then you will get the advertisement revenue um, through the views of that content using this player API in the apps you write. And just to make something clear, uh, so this is a player API. We also have a data API, and um, that's a separate API. Um, the data API has been around for a while and it allows you to search for videos, get recommendations, uh, find related videos, um, and access video metadata and things like that. And once you've got that data, then that's when you would use this player API to make the, the playback experience really great. Um, so I would have recommended that you went to the master the latest YouTube data API code lab, but unfortunately that was just before this talk. Um, if you can find it online, some of the details of that, I'm sure that would be very useful to you if you're writing a YouTube app. So um, we're quite excited about this API and we um, distributed it to a couple of our um, external partners. Um, they've only had a couple of weeks access to this API, but they've created some good demos and we'd like to uh, show you what people can do with these um, with this API. So first up, uh, we have Maria Lee, who's co-founder of Skimble, and she'll be demoing uh, their app, Workout Trainer. Oh, Maria. <clears throat> Thanks, Ross, and good afternoon, everyone. Without a doubt, everyone wants to live well and be fit, but it's not always easy. We lack guidance, motivation, and constantly feel like life itself gets in the way. Fortunately, with the proliferation of a variety of Android devices, we can now overcome these challenges in a fun, dynamic, and social way. At Skimble, we are developing the next generation fitness uh, experience for mobile. Specifically, our latest application, Workout Trainer, provides thousands of workouts on your mobile device. Our application provides a multimedia-rich experience to take out the guesswork in exercise. And our approach has helped us organically grow to be a top free health and fitness application on Google Play. Did you know you can literally exercise anywhere you are? You could be at home, on the couch, at the office, or even at Google I.O. On that note, everyone stand up, really <laughs> get off your seats, <laughs> and follow along to this. My co-founder Gabe will cue us in. All right, we're going to start out with some chest openers. Stand or sit tall with your arms in front, palm to palm. Inhale and open your arms out and back. Feel your chest and shoulders open up as you take in several deep breaths. Squeeze your shoulder blades, return and... All right, let's do march in place. Stand tall and optionally rest your hands on the back of a chair. March in place by lifting your knees up high. <laughs> Okay, some finger bursts and stretches. Make tight fists with your hands. Quickly stretch your fingers out as far as they will go and hold for three counts. Relax and return them back into fists. Repeat. All right, shadow boxing. Good one. Stand in a boxer's stance and start boxing. Pretend like yeah, you're be careful. punching the person in front of you. <laughs> Last, let's do back handsprings. But seriously, don't do this. <laughs> Begin with raised arms to perform a squat while swinging your arms downward. Lean backwards, arch your back, and thrust them. Flip over with locked arms to the floor. Swing your legs over and snap them down on the floor. All right. Whoa. Thank hey. you. <laughs> Curse of the devil. Hey, no good demo without a little crash bug. <laughs> You guys didn't expect that one coming, did ya? Thanks for, for your participation, and feel free to sit down now. <laughs> Just leave it there. And let me tell you a little bit about the YouTube integration we did uh, within Workout Trainer. We used the YouTube Android Player API to instantly stream all of our gorgeous HD exercise videos onto any Android device. During the workout, as you could tell, we were able to choose a variety of exercises 
and the API provided us with a handy thumbnail view in which we could select from. That makes our job a lot easier, and we could focus more on creating a great workout experience rather than uh, dealing with streaming video, uh, thumbnail creation, and everything else that's cumbersome with video. Uh, ladies and gents, life will continue to get in the way, and you know, by today, you're probably going to be sitting in your chair for over six hours. Fortunately, with uh, Skimble's Workout Trainer application and uh, its YouTube Android API integration, the exercise coaching you need to get active is just an Android tap away. Amazing. Thanks. Thank you very much, Maria. So getting a room of Google I.O. attendees to do exercise, I think that's almost more of an achievement than uh, Sergi's parachute jump there. So next up, we have Tony Jacobs, who is SVP of technology at Gloto. And he's going to be demoing the Gloto designer. Thanks, Ross. Hi, guys. Um, Gloto provides a self-service consumer engagement platform called Gloto Designer. Fortune 500 brands, publishers, and agencies use this sophisticated web app to engage their audience with scalable mobile and web experiences. Our customers tend to demand creative control over absolutely everything they release. When working with YouTube, they want their own videos in their own context with their own monetization. Of course, they usually have a tight budget and a really short deadline. This is why we built the um, the Gloto Designer, and more to the point, the mobile uploader for the Gloto Designer. It lets us use our HTML5 editor to make it ridiculously easy, very easy, to uh, create well-constructed native apps to browse, record, and upload videos to YouTube. We got a beta of the YouTube Android API, and we were able to play videos in line and full screen in the app, and we were able to do all this without any out-of-body experiences. Like the phrase. It, it only took about a day or so to get this working. So, uh, Ross, Anton, right there, uh, good job. <laughs> that was actually really, really easy. So, we also prepared a, uh, a video to kind of make this uh, uh, a, a little bit easier to understand. That is not the right one. Ah, there we go. So, we. we we made a really easy way for customers to build their own amazing experiences and apps right on the web. As you can see, we're concentrating on all the little details to make an app feel just right. Uh, press dates on buttons and player controls and all that. So you can see it's just playing right in the app. So we log into the free Gloto designer and, and we'll just have a look and see what's going on. As you can see, there's quite a few options here. Uh, we can build on web, we can build on mobile. But here we're going to make a mobile uploader for YouTube. That's why we're here. So as, as always, we have compl complete creative freedom. There's, uh, there's no templates forcing the workflow. We can drag, we can rearrange, and just build it out. And look, we have, uh, have some uh, videos to browse. And when we tap them, they play and go full screen. Of course, you can embed videos. You can change colors. You can change backgrounds. You can do all of that fun stuff. And we're just playing with the buttons for now. Just to keep it quick. And as always, it um, tends to be pretty easy to preview on the device. Uh, comes up, as you can see, videos play, tap things, interact, and actually move the, the system around pretty well. So we've built a bunch of examples using this tool. You can see some uh, very different layouts, color schemes. It's, it's really important. There's no, there's no templates. We're not forcing any designs on anyone. We're letting you have complete, uh, complete creative freedom uh, you can follow a brand style guide. You're not really concentrating so much on building an Android experience as much as you're, you're building a consumer experience. It's great for the consumers. And a lot of different options there. So uh, Gloto Designer is a free way to build awesome experiences very quickly and basically immediately test them on your device. And uh, that's, that's basically it. Thank you very much, Tony. So last, last up, uh, we have um, Raghu Bala, the CTO of Source Central Link Media, and he's going to be demoing their app, uh, Motor Trend. Thank you, Ross. Can you guys hear me? 
No? Okay, I will speak. So I'm Raghu Bala, I'm uh, with Soul Sintling Media, I'm the CTO. And with me is uh, Wayne May, one of our Android developers. Um, Soul Sintling Media is an enthusiast media company. We've got a number of brands, uh, some of which you guys uh, might be familiar with. Uh, among them, we have Motor Trend, Hot Rod, Automobile, um, Surfing, and so on. These are um, you know, brands that are loved by enthusiasts who are into action sports and, and outdoor lifestyle and so on. And um, uh, one of the uh, brands, uh, Motor Trend, uh, we built a Google TV app last year. And uh, recently, for this show, we have uh, done a prototype using the uh, latest um, <coughs> uh, Android Player API, um, which we are going to demonstrate here. So uh, before we begin, I want to say that for a media company, uh, there are three elements that are very important. Uh, first of which is reach. So Google TV is an important platform for us because it enables us to distribute our content and actually reach consumers uh, at their homes on a big screen. So that, that in and of itself is an important um, element for us. The second part of it is engagement. So once you reach the consumer, the second thing is to get them to consume the, your content and, and come back and uh, revisit your sites and your apps and so on. So Google TV gives us a kind of a platform where we can reach out to consumers and so on. And, and then engage them with uh, video content. And we're going to see some examples in a, in a couple of minutes here. And then the final thing is monetization. So you, you got hold of your audience. They are consuming your content, but you also have to make some money. So the uh, Android Player API, what it does for us is all of these three elements. <clears throat> we actually have an app that has been performing very well on Google TV. Uh, it's in the Android Marketplace, Google uh, Play for about nine months. It's been in the top few apps uh, throughout. And, um, and that's already in the marketplace. Uh, this app is, uh, has been built in the last two weeks using the new API. So it's a pretty, I'd say, alpha uh, uh, level uh, app application. But you know, we were able to get it up and running pretty quick. And uh, that's a testament to how easy the API is to use. And so what I'm going to do is highlight uh, three features uh, in the API that uh, were relevant to us. The first one is you're going to see on the left uh, side, on the left panel there, uh, playlists. So one can bring in YouTube's uh, playlist into your app uh, easily. And uh, so we have set up a number of playlists like Epic Drives, Head to Head, uh, things that uh, are relevant in the auto space. <clears throat> Once you select a particular um, uh, playlist, then you get to see thumbnails of videos that are in that playlist. And once you click a particular video, what we did was, <clears throat> this is the monetization aspect. So before playing the video, we show you an ad. And uh, we did this inset view of the video that's coming up next and played the ad first on full screen and then jumped into the video next. <clears throat> In my case, immediately after the what if came, we drove and a Subaru BRZ. And, uh, and then finally, one other element that is interesting, you want to go to the widget that we did? So on the desktop in Google TV, one of the things that you can do is create this widget and the interesting thing about the widget is, normally, if you don't have a widget, what you have to do is you have to hope that your consumer comes back, goes into the app, looks for new content, and then launches it, launch that content. So here with the widget, what you can do is you can actually notify the consumer of latest content. And that way, you can just click on the video directly and jump into the content immediately without having to navigate through the app and so on and so forth. So these are three features that we used as part of this quick uh, two-week uh, prototype that we built. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you very much. Demo. 
So next off, I thought I would just go into a bit more detail into how you can use the API uh, to embed YouTube in your app. So the first thing you need to do to use the API is register for a YouTube developer key. Um, the website for this will be, a link to it will be up on the um, help website once we've got the uh, API fully released. But it looks something like this. Um, you'll fill in details of your app, and then once you've uh, saved the details, you'll have uh, a developer key listed here. And so you use that developer key to initialize the app. Uh, sorry, initialize the YouTube API. So once you've done that, um, the easiest way to create, uh, to embed a video into your app is to use what we call um, a kind of fire and forget playback. So we've got an activity called a YouTube player activity, and that will allow you just to play a video um, full screen or in a kind of light box mode um, without having to worry about it very easily. So here we have fire and forget playback. This is all the code that you really need um, for that. So you first initialize the YouTube library using the developer key and your current context, as we talked about earlier. Um, then when you want to play the video, um, you create an intent using the YouTube player activity dot create intent method, uh, pass it the video ID, and then just start that, activity, that intent and it'll start an activity that plays the video full screen. Easy as that. Um, you can do a few more things with this. Um, you can pass in a playlist or a list of videos as well, give it a particular start index that you want to start from. This will allow the users to navigate through those with on-screen next and previous buttons uh, on the videos. And finally, uh, we have a light box mode, so if you would prefer to have it kind of appearing, popping out of your activity um, with some of your activity showing around the edges, you can do that as well. That was what was shown in the first uh, screenshot I showed earlier. So that's really how easy it is to embed a video. But of course, this is a kind of very easy but less flexible option. Um, you don't get to play, interact with your UI um, using this option. So we have another option, which is to actually embed the YouTube video within your UI itself. And to do that, we have two classes. Um, there's a YouTube player fragment and a YouTube player view. They're both very similar, um, but one, of course, is a fragment and one is a view. And there's some consequences to that. The fragment is the preferred option for you to use. We also have a support fragment, so if you need to use the support library, you can use that. Um, but if you can't do that, then we have a player view as well. And I'll tell you about the restrictions on that. So to embed the um, YouTube player fragment, um, you can, it's just a normal view, so you can embed it in your view hierarchy as you would any other view um, in your layout XML file. So here, um, if we hide that, we're embedding this fragment into the layout XML. We're giving it an ID, and then uh, in the demo activity, uh, again, we would need to initialize the library and then create, but then when we want to play a video, we can find that um, fragment using uh, find fragment by ID, and then load the video into it. So here I'm casting this fragment to a YouTube player. Uh, that's an interface object which both the YouTube fragment and YouTube player view um, implement. And that provides the interface for all the API access you might want for, for playing the videos. So playing, pausing, loading, queuing up videos, skipping through playlists, seeking through videos. I don't go into all the details, but the things you would expect to be able to do on a player view. As I said, the other option is for you to use a YouTube player view. Now, um, we need to control the life cycle of the player views. And because of that, um, if you're using a player view, you have to extend the activity that we provide as part of the library. So we provide this YouTube base activity, um, and you need to extend that rather than the normal activity object. Once you've done that, you can create a new YouTube player view, so that could be created in your XML again, or here I'm just creating it in code. And then you need to register that player view with the YouTube base activity, so you can't uh, make any calls on the player before you've done that. Uh, it's not initialized until you've done that. Once you've done that, it will act exactly the same way as a YouTube player fragment, um, and you can load videos, use the same interface to seek and uh, programmatically control the player view. So that's um, how easy it is to embed um, videos. Um, now, of course, what you want with these videos is for um, great full screen support. So we have the controls um, already on the player view, um, and there's a full screen button there, and when you press that button out of the box, it works. So it, there's a default implementation of um, the full screen handling. And the way it's implemented is that we uh, throw a dialogue on top of your activity and we start playback in that. 
Um, so that means you don't need to perform any additional code in your uh, uh, application to get full screen. But unfortunately, because we're doing that, it disconnects the media player and we need to reconnect it, which involves potential buffering. And so it's not the most seamless experience for users. So a recommended method for handling full screen is to use uh, a custom full screen handler. So to do that, um, the basic, the only thing you really need to do is when full screen events happen, you need to um, react to that by making sure the player view expands to fill the full view hierarchy of your activity. Um, we then have helpers that do almost everything else for you. So hiding the system UI, um, handling orientation changes, all that stuff is automatically handled for you unless you specify that you don't want us to handle it automatically. And so this provides a really seamless transition um, with no rebuffering. And so it's the, the best way to um, integrate into your apps. So here's the code here um, for handling full screen. I'll just go through it um, in detail. So I'll hide some of the extraneous detail. Um, so the first thing you need to do is have an on full screen listener. So here we're just implementing the on full screen listener as part of the activity itself. And by doing that, you'll have to implement the on full screen method you see below here. Um, the library will then call this um, on full screen method whenever uh, the player is transitioning to full screen. Um, and so here, what we're doing is we're saving the full screen um, field into a field and then relaying out the activity. And to enable this custom full screen control, you can see in the onCreate method, we have player.enable custom full screen uh, helper, which uh, takes in your on full screen listener. So in our case, this. And so, um, if you see the do layout function um, here, uh, the only changes we would need to do in the do layout is if we are going to full screen, um, we have to set the player view to have uh, the full size of the view. So here we're setting it to match parent and we hide all the other uh, UI elements. So uh, other views, visibility.view.gone. Um, and so you would also do this do layout whenever you're doing orientation changes um, or otherwise. So that gives you a brief look at one of the listeners, the on-full screen listener. There's a couple of other listeners for listening to state of the, um, the player itself. So there's a player state listener. This is a kind of high granularity uh, listener for um, kind of life cycle events of the player. So things like loading a new video, starting video playback, uh, ending video playback, and kind of stopping video playback or error events. There's then another listener called playback event listener. Um, which is a more fine-grained uh, listener which listens to events while playback is happening. So things like the users click pause, click resume, or skip to next video. Um, so just to give a brief look at the state transition diagram for these uh, listeners. So the player state listener runs something like this. Um, you start in an uninitialized state, you load a video, um, you get an unloaded, unloading callback. And between onloading and any other callback, you can't do anything with the video player. Well, you can't do certain functions such as checking the current time of the video or other functions which would necessitate knowing what video is loaded in the player because it's not loaded yet. Once the video has been loaded, you'll transition to an onloaded callback. Um, and when this happens, you have a fully um, accessible player available to you. Um, now, if you're queuing the video, it will stop there until the user clicks play. If you are loading it normally, it will kind of auto-transition into playback. So you then get a call into either on playing ad, if, you're, if it starts playing an ad first, or skip straight to on video started. And when that starts, it will give you the video ID that's currently playing. And once that video starts, if you're in the middle of a playlist, um, and next and previous is called, you may end up back in the onloading state while it loads the next video. Or if you've finished the playlist, or you've only got one video playing, you transition out into on-ended, and that's the the end of the state space. And of course, on error can happen at any time here. Um, the second listener, the playback event listener, happens only when video playback is happening. So in these two states here, these events can be firing. Um, so there's an on play, on pause, and on stop, which do, um, are called as you would expect when the user presses play pause, on stop when the video's ended, or some other um, external reason stop the video playback. Um, and then on skip, if the user decides to scrub through the video, it'll tell you where the user's finished scrubbing to. 
And then there's an unbuffering callback, which tells, lets you know that the video is buffering or stop buffering. So there's a bunch more example code in the API. Um, most of it goes through things which I've discussed here in the deep dive. Um, it's also a video wall example for a bit more of an idea of what you could do with the API. Um, and there's also a bunch of helper functions for being able to fire off intents to the main YouTube app, for example, to upload a video or uh, play back a video in the main YouTube uh, app as well. So with that, I'd like to um, bring Anton back up to the stage. Um, he's going to be doing a live coding demo to show you how easy it is to build an app from scratch uh, with the new YouTube Player API. So, All right, thank you, Ross. So what I would like to do is to create a very simple a demo application uh, from scratch, which just shows you some how easy it is to get started and use the API, and hopefully how easy it would be to embed into your apps as well. Um, so I've started here with a, a clean uh, Eclipse workspace, which uh, only has uh, the imported library project, which we distribute with the API. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just to create a new app project. Um, which will reference this, this library project. Let's see. So I've just added that there in the Eclipse uh, preferences. And the second thing we need to do is to include um, two permissions that the library requires, which is our internet and network state. So I'll just add them to our application manifest as well. Um, so that's really all the setup you need to, um, to start using the library here. Um, as Ross mentioned, we have two methods, um, two ways of putting um, a player view into our hierarchy. One is a fragment and one is uh, just a plain view. So what I'm going to do here is just add uh, the plain view. So I'm adding that here to our to the default layout, which is just a linear layout. Uh, and I'm going to make it share the, the available space here with the text view above. Um, so just setting the height here to zero, and then setting a weight on this guy. Um, and I'll do the same for text view here. Then add an ID to this guy as well, so I can reference him in the code later. All right, so that'll be our layout. Going back to the code, um, the first thing you need to do before interacting with the library is to initialize the um, initialize the library with your developer key. So what you pass in here is um, the context that we're using and a developer key. I have my um, Developer key right here. Let's copy that into our app. Let's see. There, so I'll just pass the developer key. Now this is something you really want to do in your like a one once per app kind of thing. So in the on create of your application object would be a, a good candidate. But for now I'll just put it in the on create. Um, now I'll want to get a reference to the player view, which we have in our hierarchy. So I'll just, uh, let's see, just use find view by ID here. And I'll get a reference to the text view here as well. Cool, and as Ross mentioned, we, if we go for the, if we use the player view, we will also need to extend the activity uh, that we provide, the YouTube-based activity, so we can hook into the, to the life cycle of the activity. So I'll just add that here, YouTube-based activity, and I'll just register it here. So register player view. So that's kind of all the boilerplate you need to, to start using this player view. What I'm going to do in this demo is just to, um, in the onResume method, I'll just call player view 
load video, and I'll pass into player um, the video ID that I specified above. All right, so let's try this. So I've used uh, load video here. So the expectation is that uh, uh, the app will start and the video will start playing automatically here. Whoopsie. Let's check the cable. All right. Here we go. Right, and it works. So, <laughs> great. Um, right, so these are controls here. You can kind of skip back and forth, and you can pause the video, and um, you can toggle like the quality and use captions if they're available, etc. And um, so the downside of uh, the uh, default full screen implementation becomes obvious here when we need to kind of rebuffer when we go into full screen, which is not ideal. Um, um, so one way to easily improve this demo would be to just handle the, the full screen event ourselves. So that's the next thing I'm going to add here. So just going out to the activity again and back to the code. Um, now, the custom full screen thing, there's a lot of things you need to handle when you do custom full screen, like the system UI. There's a lot of, there's a navigation bar, there's a system bar, there's um, yeah, all these kinds of automatically added UI that you want to get rid of in full screen, and uh, um, the orientation changes are kind of non-trivial to, to deal with correctly as well. Uh, luckily, there's, um, we've done some work and made it very easy, and we have a lot of helpers to help, that, help you with that. Uh, so the first thing I want to do here uh, when enabling custom full screen is to make sure that the view that we play the video in does not get destroyed when we are um, when we change the orientation to landscape for the full screen mode. So the first thing I'm going to do here is add to my manifest that I handle some configuration changes on my own. So the ones that can occur when we rotate the device are orientation, keyboard hidden, and screen size. So I'll just add that here. Um, and I will make sure that uh, the view does not get recreated. And then back in the activity, uh, we have a helper method called uh, enable custom full screen. Um, so what this does a lot of things. Uh, it enables all these orientation changes, uh, listeners, to kind of do what you want automatically. Um, the only thing we need to do is to make sure that the, the player view occupies the, all the available space. Um, and our player view will occupy all the available space as long as we just hide the text view here because they're sharing the available space. So if we get rid of the text view, then um, that should be enough. So we'll just set the visibility here. So in the listener here, uh, this will be invoked when someone clicks the, the full screen button. So we check if, if we have entered full screen, then we want to hide the text view. And if not, then we want to kind of reshow the text view. All right, so I'm going to try launching this again. Let's see, yep. switching back. So the video loading, just like before, clicking the full screen button takes you into landscape and keeps playing. You can start watching the video in landscape mode. Rotating, taking back to portrait will kind of exit full screen, as you would expect. All right, so very easy and a quick demo of what can be done with the API. That's all we'll have time to do today. But, uh, thank you very much. And back to us. Thank you, Anton. Great job. So um, that's all we have time for today. So um, just a quick wrap up. Um, a new YouTube Android a player API is on the way. Um, it works across a wide variety of Android devices and has been optimized for mobile, tablet, and Google TV. Um, it's got support way back to Froyo. Um, there's full support for monetized content. Um, 
And there's lots of helper functionality, as uh, Anton has demonstrated, for making sure you can make a really polished app. Um, so we'd like to thank you for uh, taking the time to join our session. And uh, if you have any questions, you can either uh, come up to one of the mics or meet us at the developer sandbox after the talk. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I just wanted to ask, just uh, regarding the full screen mode, what, what I didn't notice why, why did the YouTube video suddenly become landscape, and I didn't see any code related so, to that. So the automatic behavior of the API that we deal with is, if you handle um, configuration changes yourself, then we know the video is not going to be destroyed when orientation changes. And so in that case, in either case, when you press full screen, it will rotate to landscape. If you weren't handling that, then when we rotated to landscape, the whole video would be destroyed, and it would start back from the beginning. Um, I guess uh, I understood that part, but in the first case, when you went to full screen, it had to rebuffer so and everything, and it's and it, it was portrait, portrait exactly yeah. because in the first case, Anton hadn't specified that we're handling orientation changes, and so the default then is not to ori not to reorientate on um, a. a full screen changes. So if he had been in landscape mode automatically, then it would have been full screen in landscape. But we don't handle that otherwise. Um, there are flags to enable you to turn this on and off um, as you wish, but that's the kind of default behavior. Um, there's also default, there's also a flag which enables you to, whenever you rotate to landscape, to automatically transition into full screen. So if you wanted to create a portrait app which had no real landscape UI, but when you rotated, full scre rotated it went to full screen, um, you could use that flag, and that's actually what uh, uh, is being used in the uh, I.O. Companion app for phones, but not for tablets. Thank you. Next question. So does the API allow playing multiple videos in multiple fragments at the same time? No audio, but? No, there's only support for playing one video. But we can um, select from the thumbnails. And you, can, you can create what looks like a player view, and then when the user presses play, it'll, you could move the player to that uh, thumbnail and play back there. Um, that's what some of our partners have been doing. Um, so there's the, you can make the appearance of multiple videos on a large UI, and then when, you pr when the user presses one of the thumbnails, then playback happens in that thumbnail with one video object. So, and will we have a way to customize those thumbnails, like how they are presented in a layout? Or um, The thumbnail support, uh, we have helper functions to give you a thumbnail, but you can also download the thumbnails from the data library itself. Um, so if you were wanting to do some customization that way, you could potentially do it using the data API instead. Um, there will not be customization on the thumbnails uh, views that we provide as part of the library, right. um, hey, other than have showing a play button or not. Sorry, at the back. Um, I have two questions. Um, the first one, um, the controls um, in the player view, uh, are we able to customize that and also um, the uh, like video and add to playlist, are they also in the built-in controls? So um, on your first question, um, you can't customize the controls, but you can select from a couple of controls which we provide. So there's um, the default controls which we showed there. There's a minimize view where you just have the red bar at the bottom, but there's no other ability to scrub or anything like that. Or there's the chromeless player where there's no controls. Um, we're not allowing uh, customization of the controls itself, and uh, you can't uh, overlay uh, objects on top of the player view either. Um, your second question was about uh, likes and dislikes. Um, that's not uh, going to be in the first version of the, the API. Um, there is the ability um, in, the API, in the controls themselves to, when you press the YouTube logo, that takes you to the main YouTube app. And so that would allow users to like and dislike from the main YouTube app. So that would be a workaround. So is that going to be, like, is it, is it planned um, to have that? It's in a potential future, future uh, revision, um, yes. We, okay. we, we can potentially think about that, but there's no Because no that would be really helpful, because um, uh, the whole point of having a player view in our app is that we don't want to you know, have the user go to the YouTube app, and that's, what, that's not really seamless. Um, sure. You could have. That's exactly the reason we're creating this. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it's good feedback. We'll we'll take that on board and um, see what we can do for future versions of the API. Okay. Um, I have one last question. Um, so uh, you uh, you said that if you want to use the YouTube Player View, um, you need to extend the uh, YouTube activity. Yes. Um, 
but what if I am al already extending some other activities in the framework? Like, then uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to use the YouTube player fragment. Um, so the only option in that case is to use a fragment or a support fragment. Um, okay. If you're using the player view, you must extend the YouTube base activity. Um, we need to control the life cycle of the player, and that's the only way we can do it. OK. All right, Thank thanks. You. Thank you. All right, one Next more question. question. So in the state machine, uh, there is a playing ad portion. So if I choose not to monetize my application, is there a way to skip the ad? There's no way to. Um, if you choose not to monetize your application, then you're going to need to select non-monetized YouTube videos. Um, there's no option to turn off ads for monetized content because that's the content providers of specified that they want uh, adverts to be played if the video is played. So if you want no ads to show, only use non-monetized content. Yes, so if I own the content. If you own I the content, can... you can do whatever you want with it, yes. All right, thank you. All right, guys, okay. thank you very much. Thanks very much for your time.